All right, well, joining us now is John Marston, who's president of Metallurgium, a Phoenix-based company that consults uh, for the mining industry in, uh, worldwide in a variety of services. John is also president of SME and just gave the keynote address this morning here at the Tucson conference. So, John, welcome to AMR. Yeah, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to chat with you a little bit. Well, before we get into your, your talk this morning, can you tell us a little bit about Metallurgium and, and what kind of services you provide to the industry? Yeah, I, uh, I set up uh, Metallurgium uh, about six years ago, and uh, after working in the industry for about 30 years okay. around the world, um, my background is in uh, copper gold extraction, uh, either or both. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the expertise. Um, but Metallurgium uh, offers consulting services to uh, the industry worldwide. Uh, it's, it's myself and, and we have several associates. But uh, we, uh, we provide services like feasibility study reviews, uh, metallurgical reviews, um, new technology assessments and so on. Okay, you've also published a book. Yeah. I've written a book that's published by SME on gold. That's correct, yeah. Um, uh, me and a co-author uh, wrote a book in the early 90s on gold extraction, okay. uh, published it with a small publisher in the UK, and then we brought it to SME for the second edition, and they've done a great job. So. Excellent. Okay. Well, you gave the keynote address as president of SME uh, at the conference here. What were the key issues that you brought forward that you wanted to share with, the, with that group and that we can tell our audience about? Yeah, you, you know, the, obviously the title was uh, iPhones Everywhere, um, but no one wants my mind, and that was a tongue-in-cheek uh, dig at, uh, at uh, you know, the fact that, that people out there in the, uh, in the wider world um, all use technology and, mm -hmm. and uh, take advantage of all of the good things that come from mining, but they don't understand that it actually does come from mining. Um, and so, of course, uh, you know, there are, there are a number of issues that we're facing within the mining industry, uh, a big one of which is this perception of mining and, and the fact that it's not widely understood and acknowledged that mining has an important role to play. Um, and I think, you know, the one thing that, uh, that, that I think SME can do going forward is help to address some of these key issues facing the mining industry. Not all of them, but there are some very important ones that, that SME can address. Um, and there are a few ways that SME is doing that. One is through the Minerals Education Coalition, which provides materials, educational materials for K through 12 education, and some very good materials. And I would urge people to go online um, you know, to the SME website and look at some of those materials. And, and in fact, any SME member can buy them at a nominal cost and distribute them to schools. Okay. We'll make sure we post use. that that URL on the screen here so our viewers will be That would be great. That. Yeah, that would be really good. Um, so that's one area. But the other area that's a, a, a really hot topic for SME right now is faculty development. You know, our tertiary mm -hmm. education system for the mining industry, for engineering programs that are core to the mining industry, so mining engineering, metallurgical engineering, mineral process engineering, and geological engineering, those are, are disciplines that we have a bit of a crisis in faculty. Um, we have faculty that is getting towards retirement age. Right. We have 14 schools around the country. Uh, some of those are under significant threat um, of, mm -hmm. of disappearing and the programs being absorbed into no other non-core mining programs. And that presents a, a pretty significant challenge for the mining industry because we have to have um, core mining and metallurgical geological programs to support our industry. So what's SME trying to do about that? So what we've done, SME has been building up a, a good base of scholarship giving mm. um, and, and gives SME national and uh, the Women's Auxiliary of SME donate almost $400,000 a year in scholarships uh, for, for the right disciplines. But we've just approved, the board of SME and the foundation have just approved a program to provide support for two key aspects of faculty development. One is PhD fellowships. So this is to provide some significant funding for uh, a, a number of PhD fellowships in the coming years but also to provide career grants after people get their uh, PhDs. 
So that would give funding to uh, support a bridge to gain tenure at one of the universities or colleges offering core mining and metallurgical programs. So SME is excited about this. This is a significant right. program. It's a significant financial commitment. This is something that our members want us to do. Our donors to the foundation want this money to be utilized for educa tertiary education, building the systems that will ensure that we have schools that can provide well-qualified mining and metallurgical engineers. It seems, yeah, it seems like you've really targeted that nicely because what I've seen, as you mentioned, we have many fewer schools today than we did a generation ago that offer the degrees. Undergraduates coming out earn salaries much higher than almost any other undergraduates coming out. So it's very attractive to go off to industry and not stay in and get your PhD and, and there's fewer schools that, that have faculty positions. So it seems like it's, a, it's been a vicious circle. So maybe this will help break that cycle and uh, provide another pathway to get people in at the PhD level to become faculty members. We believe it will. We believe this will make it help. This has got to be a sustained program. We've planned it as a sustained program over at least seven years uh, to maintain funding over those periods for a significant number of positions, not just one or two. Uh -huh. This is for multiple positions, both in terms of the PhD fellowships and the career grants. But there's another aspect of this that is still a challenge, and that is research funding. You know, since the U.S. Bureau of Mines shut down, um, we have been, we've had no real sustained funding for research into our industry that, that is government-based. And we have to change that. We have to find a way to change that, and we have to find a way to gain uh, some, some significant level of funding for our schools. Um, for them to be successful because it doesn't matter how many faculty we, we train and develop and hire and bring right. in, if they don't have research dollars, they can't have a thriving department. That's right, because as we've seen here in Arizona, around the country, uh, state universities typically are getting maybe 30% of their overall funding from the state. They're having to raise the rest of it from research grants and the overhead from that to maintain operations. Right. Um, my analysis, and we've had the same discussions among state geologic surveys, about mining research. The U.S. Geological Survey puts out $200,000 a year in mining grants. And that seems to be about the limit of what comes out of the federal government. Hundreds of billions of dollars in research, billions in energy research, tens of billions in energy research, and $200,000 a year in, in mining. That, <laughs> there's a disconnect there. And, and, here, and here's the, the piece, the other piece to that that I think we have to start changing the conversation is, these dollars going into energy research, a huge piece of reinventing the energy systems going forward and energy generation and energy utilization is going to rest upon the mining industry because the materials required for those industry sectors are very, um, you know, metals and minerals materials intensive. So we've got to try to change the conversation. We've got to try to to uh, make sure that people understand how important mining is going to be in the future. There this was, is not a dying industry. No, oh, absolutely not. And it was, uh, we've, we've uh, been touting an article in the journal Nature from last year that we've shown at a couple of the conferences around here that, that talked about the mineral resources needed for a renewable energy environment, for yeah. solar panels, for just even the cement and aggregate to build the foundations and base and that we've got to produce more minerals in the next generation than we have in all of recorded history if we're going to convert over to this new uh, renewable energy-based economy. And the infrastructure is not there to support that. Right. So there's, we're going to come to a crisis here soon. Right. And, and you know, we have to do it while meeting all of these requirements that have been placed on the industry in the last 15, 20, 30 years, right. you know, which is environmental stewardship, which is the right thing to do, health and safety, which is the right thing to do, um, but you know it doesn't make it any easier uh, to to complete the task. Right. So we we've got some challenges ahead of us. But we think with the SME programs to help support faculty development, if we can start to to ensure that our tertiary education programs can be successful, we can get high quality graduates that are motivated that want to be in our industry, coming into the industry and and. The things that need to happen to meet those needs can happen. Okay. 
So that's what SME is doing. Do you have a sense of what the big issues in 2015 will be across the nation? Uh, we're going to have a uh, Republican Congress that uh, may be more amenable to some of the mining bills that have been stalled because of the divided Congress. Uh, but we're also seeing commodity prices in some tough situations. What's your forecast in 2015? Where are the, what are the big issues, big topics that, that you expect next year? Well, I, I wouldn't pretend for a minute to be an expert on metal pricing and what, what <laughs> metals are going to do. Um, you know, I think you, you take every metal and there are some different issues there. Obviously, we've seen significant softening in, you know, iron ore, copper, gold. Um, you know, th those uh, sectors of, of our industry are, are being hit pretty hard and it's, it's shrinking margins and, and making it difficult for operators to do what they need to do. Um, we're seeing a, a number of projects being placed on hold, certainly marginal projects are being placed on hold. Uh, good projects in any sector are still going ahead. A good project is a good project, so we're, we're still seeing that happen. Uh, so there is obviously, you know, confidence in the underlying, you know, economy in terms of supporting uh, a base load of mineral projects. Um, you, you know, the Chinas have been at the forefront of the discussion in recent months because of the, the, slow, the slower growth, you know, 7.2, 7 7.3 percent growth rates. But I think we have to remember that, you know, China has come a long way in 10 years and the, the, the phenomenal growth rates that we saw 10 years ago um, were from a fairly low base. The growth rates that we're seeing today are from a higher base. So there is a, there is a pretty strong fundamental demand for, certainly for, for copper and, and, uh, and, and you know, perhaps to a lesser extent iron ore, but there, there are some good strong fundali fundamentals underlying those, those sectors. You know, that's a really good point because I think the articles I see talk about slowing rates within China, but 7% of a trillion dollars may be a lot more than 20% of a hundred billion. Right. So that's, that's a really good point. Right, and, and I think, you know, the, the other thing that, that you see, if you look at the, you know, and I did show some slides earlier today on, on cars and, and the emerging electric car technology, uh, some very exciting things going on in, in car technology, transportation systems, in battery storage, particularly, um, you know, energy storage for, for, um, for solar and wind power, uh, solar panels, there's some really interesting uh, developments there. And, and most of those are metals intensive. And uh, so when you actually look at a lot of the, the, the way technology is evolving, um, the metals intensity is, is not going down. Um, the, the metals intensity, and I use that term very broadly, yeah. is going up. So, you know, that certainly gives some underlying strength and confidence to the, to the metals markets. As we've talked to companies over uh, on the show over the last year, uh, we've heard big companies, medium companies, all saying they're coming back to the U.S. and coming back to Arizona, where they've been looking around the world, saying, "Hey, we're we're looking for you know some big big targets," but they run into permitting and not, uh, changing rules, uh, security issues, saying, "You know, there's still a lot left here in the U.S. and particularly in Arizona." And as an Arizona-based company, are you seeing a, a kind of renewed sense of exploration uh, around the state of Arizona? Well, and, and I'm not an exploration expert, right. but, but I'll tell you, um, I think there's tremendous potential uh, in Arizona and the, and the rest of the Western U.S. You know, we've seen these moves towards resource nationalism occurring in, in a number of countries. Um, you know, as we've gone through this fairly strong cycle prior to about 18 months ago, you know, we had an eight-year run where we had very strong metal pricing on the gold side, copper, iron ore, um, that, that were, you know, just bounding along. And uh, as, as foreign companies operating in, in other countries, um, you know, were, uh, were seen to be reaping the profits, a number of countries are now turning towards, you know, nationalizing assets or, or at least gaining a bigger slice of the, of the pie. And of course, that's a real challenge for companies now as metal prices are retreating. Capital and operating costs have gone up tr tr tremendously over the last uh, five to 10 years. 
which has put huge pressure on margins now as metal prices have retreated. So with these moves towards resource nationalism that, that seem to still have, have gathered some momentum, um, I think people are realizing that, that doing business in politically stable parts of the world uh, in areas where you've got a, a workforce that is stable and, and you've got relatively stable pricing. Uh, we've got the, the whole oil and gas boom here in the, in the U.S. that we're going to be self-sufficient in oil uh, within a, a few years. Um, we could potentially be exporting oil and gas um, if, with, with the right uh, administration. So, you know, there are some, there are some real uh, factors here that make the U.S. A, a, a really strong place to, to do business, whereas just a few years ago, you know, everybody was flocking, yes, right. flocking overseas right. because that's where the opportunities were. So I think, I think some of the uh, chickens are coming home to roost, um, and, uh, and I think there are great opportunities here in Arizona, and I, I, there are a number of projects that I've been working on that, uh, that you know, that certainly show, show some promise. Okay. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us. I'll give you a chance. Was there anything that you wanted to bring up that we haven't covered or uh, any last thoughts? No, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to chat with you. And it's been a, it's been a great meeting here in, uh, in Tucson. The, uh, the staff here have done a great job and SME staff have done an excellent job of, of organizing this and the, uh, the Arizona uh, board have done a great job. Yeah, it's, it's always a great conference here, so it's really yeah. great to have you join us today. Thank you very much, and best of luck in your term as SME president. The, the plans you've laid out here look really exciting, could have huge impact. So we'll, uh, we'll want to follow up with you or your successor here and see how these things are developing in, in coming months and years. Great. great. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Yeah, okay. Thank you.